Hey, hey guys, I have got a really fun kind of Valentine-y um, project here for the kids. So this is our coil plate is what we what we call it. Um, this is gonna be one of our slab pieces. So you guys know that we do one coil pot, we do one pinch pot, and we do one slab piece every single session. So this is gonna be our slab piece. I like to save these for the winter because we can combine them with our um, kind of a Valentine's theme. So everyone will have a baggie of templates. This is gonna be the same as all of our other slab pieces, how we have the templates for like the gingerbreads and what have you. So you'll only have a handful in there. The kids need to share these and they're not all gonna be on the same you know, timetable, so they need to share those. So we will need our example. This is an extra one I just made. This has not been bisqued. You'll notice it's a completely different color than the bisque ones. Um, you will need your clay. I just kind of grabbed this out of the bin. That's way too much. That's better. Um, wet paper towel. You really don't need any water for this one, but I um, like to have it there just for myself, just in case. You will need your lesson plan and then also a scrap sheet of paper for the kids to draw their heart on. So let's go ahead and start by looking at our lesson plan here. As always, we have our instructions, step one, all the way down through the last step five here. You can read it word by word if you're nervous or you forgot or whatever. Um, we have our very short two, three sentence um, art history lesson. On the back of this, we have our piece that we're learning about, which is inspiring us. We have a little picture of the artist down here. This is Gustav Klimt. This picture is The Kiss, very, very famous. Most of your kids will have seen this. It's a fun like multimedia, mixed media um, project. So when you're holding this and you are reading the instructions to the kids, they have this nice picture to kind of look at so they're not zoning out into you know other stuff in the classroom. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read through the little art history lesson. This is The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. It's from 1907. Most of the kids will not understand even what that year is because we're so far past that. Uh, Gustav Klimt was an Austrian symbolic painter. The Kiss was an oil painting with gold and silver leaf added. Klimt used uh, graphic patterns to flatten parts of the image. So what that means is this does not look like a realistic painting. It doesn't look like it's coming out at you or that you could touch it. So he used all of these patterns right here to completely flatten out the piece, um, which at the time was absolutely revolutionary for painting. So if you've ever seen this in real life, it's absolutely gorgeous because um, it has all of this gold leaf on it. So we love that. I want you to show the kids these coils. This is just like we have on the back of our um, our piece for our Javon coil pot and our African coil pot. Most kids don't understand what a coil is. And I, you know, I do tell them, hey guys, this is a snake. Remember we make snakes with Play-Doh when we're in kindergarten or preschool. And then they say, oh yeah, I know what that is. Um, but for the actual different types of coil, it's really helpful for them to look at this. So I will walk around, I'll spend like two minutes to walk around and let each table kind of look at this while I hold it. So we've got spirals, short coils, long coils, twist, braids, these are so beautiful. Um, the spheres are my least favorite because they like to fall off. Folds are fun, donuts are a little more challenging, and then the rainbow arches, those are also really fun. So we're going to kind of read through this um, step by step for you guys, follow it along, and I'm excited to see what kind of little creations you guys come up with. So step one, let's look at the examples of the coils so all the kids can see all of those so they can know what they're going to be designing. Step, uh, step one and a half is trace the heart template on your paper. So first what the kids need to do so that their piece comes out better is the kids need to trace their hearts onto a spare piece of paper and that's what they're going to be building their piece on. This keeps it from getting stuck to the mat because these coil plates will really, really not come off of the mat. So your kids are gonna trace it with a pencil because that's the only tool they'll have. So this helps them to come up with one, an actual heart shape. Some of these kids really struggle with the 
shape department, but two, it keeps all of the shapes uniform, all of the sizes uniform. Remember, we've got 1,500 students each session coming through our studio, and if some of them are this big, we don't have enough room in our kiln for everything. So one class, which is 20 students, needs to fit onto one half of a kiln shelf. Once they have this, they can draw their design. So we're going to use this just as an example of um, a design that we can make. So right here, we put a spiral, spiral coil right here. And this is all, this is all we mean when we say, hey, design your coil pot. Right here, we did the little fold. So that's kind of like a ribbon or a little snaky thing. And then here we did some long coils and some short coils. That's all the students have to do. You do want them to check with you so that they're not designing something that's way too intricate because that can get kind of that can get kind of crazy. So once they have this, they are literally going to color their work in with the clay. So step number two, um, using your pepper, excuse me, using your paper as a template, color in your heart with clay. They're literally going to build it on this paper. So let's move this for a side and go ahead and make all of our coils just to get that out of the way. Here's what your kids are gonna have the hardest time with is making these coils. They get so frustrated with this. Um, I have my mat taped down because it goes all over the place and I don't like my mat moving. Obviously you can't tape down all your students pieces. So when they make their coils, their mat's going to roll all over the place. That's okay. If they want to do it on the table, that's also okay. I would discourage that just because more clay on the table is more stuff that you have to clean up at the end of class. Um, so if they can keep it on the mat, but if you know they're having a meltdown and it's flying all over the place, then by all means, just do it on the table. Usually when I teach this class, I basically start with the kinder. So we go over the lesson and I show them the example. And then when I turn them loose to make their own pieces, I just walk around all the kinders first and I literally will spend an entire class almost just rolling out coils um, to keep the class moving. Because the last thing you want is for the kids to be feeling discouraged or frustrated because they can't you know, get these coils. And yes, that looked easy, but I've been doing this for 20 years. So it's not gonna be so easy for them. The size of our coil, what I always tell our students is you want to be about the size of a pencil. Any thicker, it might blow up, any thinner, and it's going to be too fragile. We got, we, we usually have like at least one kid in the class who really likes to make delicate things and they will roll out a coil that is this tiny. Oh honey, that is going to break. There's no way that that survives in the kiln. So we discourage teeny tiny coils. We wanna shoot for the size of a pencil. And your students will already have a pencil at their desk, so it'll be easy for them, you know, to kind of look at that. So we got our little coils. I'm going to go ahead and set mine aside. Your kids don't have to make all of them at one time. I just did for the sake of making this lesson faster, um, but they will probably make them as they go. So we're going to color in. We're still on step two here, guys. We're going to color it in with our clay. So that just means we're tracing over all of these lines with our clay, with our little coil here. So follow our outside first. They need to do the outside line first or else they're gonna have a really hard time containing their shape. That's our outside one. Now we need to do our spirals for the inside. And the way that we handle a spiral is we just roll it up like a snail. Some of our teachers say like a cinnamon roll. However, your kids can understand it best. So there's my coil. And if it's a little bit bigger than, you know, what they drew, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. We're going to make another coil. That one's too small. So I'm starting with this guy. There's going to be like some blank spaces in here. Um, you can tell your kids not to worry about that because in the end of this, we are going to be smoothing this all completely out and those blank spaces will be disappearing. We don't really want to have holes in here because um, that can lead to breakage. So now we're gonna work on our little fold here. I'm gonna go ahead and make it down here just because it will be difficult to make it inside of my heart. This will not be long enough, so I will have to make another one to go on the bottom. So we kinda, let's try and cover up that little hole right there with our coil like that. Perfect. Smush up there. I don't know, my hands don't really wanna to work today. I don't know what's going on. We're gonna continue this. 
going back like that just until we fill in the bottom of our pot or our plate perfect and then this one's going to be some long coils some of your kids are going to fly through this some of your kids will need a little bit more time um, now remember when I said that I had too much clay at the beginning and then I took a bunch of it and put it over here that was done I will clearly need more Ooh. Roll this out over here. Now, if your kids don't have quite enough clay for this, um, that means that they rolled their coils too fat for this. Plop that off, fill that little guy in. So you see all these little cracks in here? That's okay. We're gonna go in and we're going to smooth all this out. We're gonna flatten it down. So all of those cracks are going to disappear. So when I say color in your picture with your clay, this is what I mean. Boop, that was too long. All right, so we got that in there. Again, those cracks, A-OK. -okay. We're gonna smooth it all out. We're gonna move on to step number three here. After if you have filled in your entire heart, use a damp paper towel to blend or erase one side of your heart. Do not blend and erase both sides of your heart because then you won't see the coils. You only want to blend one side and that's the side that's not touching the paper, this side right here. Um, so I like to give it a little, a little press down right here to get everybody nice and flat. And then I'm gonna go in with my damp paper towel here and I'm gonna start smoothing just like this. So you see how that makes those little lines disappear? It looks like they're erased exactly what we want. So we talk a lot about muscle memory in pottery and that's that this clay once it dries it wants to go back to whatever form it was before. So if I'm making a piece that has um, separate coils it's going to want to revert back to that once it dries. I don't know why it does that. I don't know how it does it. I, I wish I really understood it better um, but I don't. So the way that we kind of combat that is we blend, blend, blend until we die and then we blend some more. When they're blending, you do want to try and encourage them to go from out in. If you're going from in out, you're gonna pull your coils apart and we're trying to push our coils together. So when I say out in, I mean like this, from the outside in, not in out. Or they can just kind of go into circles. Make sure the kids don't use too much water because this will become a sloopy sloppy mess. Once you are finished erasing all your lines, if you had any of your heart that kind of got wonky like that, you can go in and trim it up. So that'll drive me crazy. Some of these kids are OCD like me, so they'll want to go in and trim that up. Make a nice crisp heart. So that's basically it. Um, you're gonna write the name on the back of these. Now I know normally we don't write on the back of stuff, but with slabs, we just don't have another place to write it. Uh, make sure you write the name really big. So for this one, I'm gonna write Alyssa. The bigger you write it, the more chance we will have in the studio of reading it uh, if part of it gets smushed because only part of one of these letters will get smushed, not the whole thing. So my first name, the initial of my last name, Alyssa B. And we have to do that because there is more than one of almost every single name um, in the DMV. And if it gets kind of shuffled around in the kiln or gets put in the wrong bin, you want to make sure that it gets back to you. So Alyssa B is on there. Now, optional. If they want, they can do that magic. That's really almost like that's going to be one of their favorite things to do to peel this off of here and see that their coils are still intact. I don't know. It's totally going to blow their mind. Um, so this is what their plate is going to look like in the end. If, if they start to pull it off of this and the paper is ripping and it's shredding their heart, tell them not to worry about it. We don't need to pull it off. Once it dries here in the studio, it will be easy to get off of here. So they don't have to worry about it. You could literally, if you wanted to, you could just stack them like this in there that would keep them nice and protected that's totally fine but if they want to see the magic and if it's cooperating that day then they can just pull it off just like that have their awesome little coil plate and then when we go in to paint this they're going to be able to paint each of these coils like a different color it's going to be fantastic 
If your kids want to go in at the very end and make their lines a little more defined, they can. I would really only suggest that if there is time because, um, you know, so often there's not enough time. And also the more that they kind of draw on this, it's gonna create these little burrs right here, these little clay chunks, little clay turds. Um, if there's a ton of time and they have just like flown through this so fast, you can encourage them to do this. And then what they can also do if they have a bunch of time in their early finishers is they can go in and add a little more detail. So we can go in and we can do, hey, that's interesting. Let's put some polka dots in our spiral. Just like that. There we go. They could add other lines, like if they wanted to add some just little, I don't know what these are called, little hash marks, I don't know. They could do that. Um, for my peace of mind, I'm going to double up and make it mirror. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side or else my OCD brain will explode. So we're gonna make sure it's the same, make sure that it's mirrored. And then that's pretty much it for this project. They're gonna have a lot of fun doing this because there's a, a million different ways you can do this and no two hearts are gonna look the same. Um, and then most of the kids are gonna be like, I wanna make this for my mom, which is amazing. Or I wanna make this for my best friend. I'm looking at this and this now definitely looks like a colon. So that's kind of gonna gross me out, but um, you know, I'm sure the kids will love it. So that is it. That is our Valentine's Day project, our coil plate. I hope you guys enjoyed that.